everyone. I will be discussing the answers to the quiz I posted yesterday. This quiz is based on my previous video on how to understand the thyroid gland and Graves' disease. Let's get started. Question number one. The thyroid gland predominantly produces which of the following? Option A, T4, Option B, T3, Option C, RT3, Option D, Parathyroid Hormone. The answer to this question is T4. The major product of the thyroid gland is T4. T3, however, is the more active form. With the help of the enzyme deiodinase, T4 gets converted to T3. RT3 is a byproduct of this reaction. Parathyroid hormone is produced by the parathyroid gland. It helps in regulating the levels of calcium in our body. Question number two. Which form of the thyroid hormone is active? Option A, bound form. Option B, free form. Option C, both. The thyroid hormone is bound to proteins like albumin and thyroid binding globulin. The bound form is not active. It is only the free form that is active. And by active, I mean being able to stimulate target tissues as well as being able to contribute to negative feedback. I have mentioned them in detail in my previous video. The significance of this will be discussed in question number 4. Question number 3. Which of the following is most likely the lab findings of a patient with Graves' disease? Option A. High TSH, high free T4. Option B. Low TSH, high free T4. Option C. High TSH, low free T4. Option D, low TSH, low free T4. In Graves' disease, there is an antibody known as thyroid-stimulating antibody. It binds to the TSH receptors on the thyroid gland. It works exactly how TSH does and it increases the amount of thyroid hormone in the blood. An increase in free T4 results in symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Furthermore, the increase in free T4 causes negative feedback on the pituitary, leading to a decrease in TSH levels. Similar labs are seen in functional thyroid adenoma, exogenous administration of thyroid hormone, and transiently in subacute thyroiditis. Functional thyroid adenoma can be felt as a mass on physical exam and can be seen on ultrasound. In case of exogenous thyroid hormone administration and subacute thyroiditis, radioiodine uptake will be low. This is because thyroid hormone is not synthesized by the gland in these two diseases. Exogenous thyroid hormone administration decreases TSH levels by negative feedback, leading to decrease in thyroid hormone synthesis by the thyroid gland. In case of subacute thyroiditis, there is a release of preformed thyroid hormone, which leads to transient symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Whereas in Graves' disease, the radioiodine uptake will be high. This is because thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulin increases the synthesis of thyroid hormone by the thyroid gland. So, although the TSH and free T4 levels are similar in all these diseases, they can be differentiated by different methods. High TSH and high free T4 can be seen in TSH-secreting pituitary adenoma, High TSH and low free T4 can be seen in primary hypothyroidism and Sheehan syndrome presents with low TSH and low free T4. Question number 4. Which of the following can increase the total thyroid hormone levels without leading to symptoms of hyperthyroidism? Option A, nephrotic syndrome. Option B, exogenous thyroid hormone administration. Option C, pregnancy. Option D, liver failure. The answer to this question is pregnancy. Thyroid hormone synthesis is increased in pregnancy by two mechanisms. 
The first one is increased estrogen. To understand this, let's assume this is the baseline amount of free T4 and this is the baseline amount of proteins. Estrogen increases the production of thyroid binding globulin. It also decreases the clearance of this protein. So, the amount of bound thyroid hormone will increase. This way, the amount of free thyroid hormone will decrease. This will trigger the thyroid gland to make more T4 in order to maintain the required levels of free T4. Hence, the total thyroid hormone in the body will increase but the amount of free T4 will remain the same. As mentioned before, it is only the free form that can cause symptoms of hyperthyroidism. So, we can conclude that although pregnancy increases the total amount of thyroid hormone, it does not cause symptoms of hyperthyroidism. The second mechanism is because of HCG. HCG and TSH have a common alpha subunit. Due to the structural similarity, HCG has the ability to stimulate the thyroid gland directly. This increases the amount of thyroid hormone. Nephrotic syndrome causes loss of proteins like albumin. Liver failure leads to decrease in albumin synthesis. Since proteins available to bind to thyroid hormones is less, these two conditions can lead to decrease in total thyroid hormone levels. Exogenous administration of thyroid hormone can lead to symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Question number 5. Which of the following steps does not take place in the thyroid gland? Option A, organification. Option B, conversion of T4 to T3. Option C, coupling. Option D, all of them take place in the thyroid gland. The answer to this question is conversion of T4 to T3. There are three steps in thyroid hormone synthesis. Oxidation, organification and coupling. I have mentioned them in detail in my previous video on how to understand the thyroid gland and Graves' disease. All these steps take place in the thyroid gland. The conversion of T4 to T3 takes place in the peripheral tissues by the enzyme deiodinase. We have now come to the end of this video. I hope this was helpful. Do let me know if you have any questions or suggestions. I would be happy to hear from you guys. I have mentioned my contact details in the description below. Stay safe and stay happy.